Qatar and Excel, the Star Spangled Banner in the Kia C. Get ready and some coffee. Get ready! Because if we don't practice our playing, it can become irritating. Irritating. Ah, yes. One of your earth emotions. And if we really stop practicing, the tating moves beyond our ear, rapidly spreading the way radical stupidity ironically spreads through college campuses. Certain you don't know what irritation is? In fact, one of my ancestors married a human female. Yeah, that'll learn you some irritation, but hopefully in a fun way. Well, you always miss when you throw your underpants at the hamper. Well, how can I ever hit the hamper if you don't let me practice? <laughs> anyway, anyways, the irritation can spread to heditating, to backitating, ultimately resulting in the entire body being corporolitating. Practiced all day on my birthday. And that's a lot of tating to take. That is a lot to take in all of a sudden. So let's practice. Let's practice. <laughs> me, 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 me. Because, because too much tating may make you as sad as Joe Biden. Today will never get so bad. But Lisa, you're still complaining from your throat, not your diaphragm. I was so bored. On that terrible day when he found out his uncle was eaten by cannibals. I learned that President Nixon had been eaten by white cannibals on an island near Tijuana. For no good reason at all. Where he was like, we, we, never, we never recovered the body because cannibals... And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real. But luckily we were able to find some solace on that sad day. You hear a lot of savage and unnatural things about people these days. By retrieving and burying a hefty piece of the, of the chieftain cannibal's crap. And it's like, yeah... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I believe that presidential story either, Phil. I mean, a giant lion's head made of fire? I'm not even sure I believe it. I mean, that, that tail's taller than a giraffe on stilts, for crying out loud. Yeah, but still, it makes me sad that his brain no longer works. Especially when it never worked so well to start with, so to make him feel better, let's hire him to rule the world. Because that's the nice thing to do. Oh my goodness, Phil. You, you have so irritated me. That, that's like hiring Elmer Fudd to lead us into war or something. To apologize to me publicly for calling me stupid. Five. That, that's like hiring Forrest Gump to put together a game plan when he doesn't know which end zone is his. That's like, that's like asking Ron Burgundy to write his own script. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy? Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? I mean, that, okay, that's like hiring some college student radical majoring in like how communist theory applies to cooking tuna salad to, to help us make money in a blessedly capitalistic country as we try to contribute to society by actually growing a business rather than tearing them down. I mean, it's crazy talk, Phil. It's crazy talk. By the way, wh wh what did you major in, Phil? Okay, no. Please, Phil, t t take off the kaffia and stop putting your forehead to the ground in prayer like that. We, we all know you're a Western intellectual atheist, not religious in any way for crying out loud. Honestly, you're not even, you're not even doing it right, Phil. The wrong end of your body pointing at the Kaaba. Oh no, now, now, now Phil's chanting, down with capitalism, up with Sharia law. While, while cutting off the head of a Wicca doll shaped like George Washington. Honestly, Phil. Yeah, I, I think you're mixing up the whole Wicca witchcraft thing with the Sharia law thing when they're totally, they're totally not the same thing, Phil. Whatever, dude. I'm, I'm just going to play some music. Le, le, today's lesson being the Star Spangled Banner. And don't cut that part out, Phil. 
Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you want access to the workbook, then for anyone watching, we plan on providing access for free. So if you're having any problems downloading it, let us know. We'll try to fix them. This presentation is a little bit different than what we've been doing recently, but I think it fits well within our project. Our project has been to map out all the notes in the key of C and related mode on our fretboard doing so by chunking the fretboard down into five components and then mapping out all the notes on each of those parts of the fretboard so we can play vertically within each of them and then seeing how we can kind of link them together so we can play horizontally as well now the star spangled banner we're going to be looking at it in the key of c which of course fits well uh within our project so we'll try to map out the song here so that we can basically play through it. But we also just want to map it out in such a way that we can think about what you might do uh, with a song to kind of play around uh, with the melody of it. And then we'll also think about some different ways that you might that you might map it out, how possibly you can take what we look at here and change the key with it and and a couple things like that. So before we get into that first note, that when we look at our fretboard, I'm going to be mapping everything out with the uh, low or heavy string on top within the fretboard. So that's going to be this E is going to be representing the string on the guitar that's closest to the ceiling. The, my rationale for doing that is that I think that's easier to see. I'm also going to flip the guitar that you're going to see on the screen so it looks like I'm playing left-handed. The reason I'm doing that is because I think it's easier to map out the screen here to what you see on the guitar because they'll be on the same side of the screen. So that so I'm not like a music theory guru. This is what I think I I think this might be more helpful for people that are learning guitar and, and aren't uh, as accustomed to tablature and whatnot, which they have to kind of flip in their mind. To, to basically see once you see it this way then you'll get better at being able to flip it in your mind and you could see it upside down or whatever and be able to see the same patterns so so that's going to be the idea i've also have numbers in here because i think it's useful to be able to convert between the number of a note there's 12 notes in the musical alphabet and the letter of the note if you don't want to deal with those numbers then uh that is uh okay so that's going to be that idea then down here we have our tablature which once again I'm going to put upside down, meaning this is going to be the heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling, so that when you map this out, I think it's going to be easier to see just intuitively if you're not really good at looking at tablature. At least that's how I see it. So, so when we look at the tablature, notice these are going to be the, the, the notes or the strings, right? So uh, uh, this from top to bottom, E, A, D, G, B, E. And then we're, when, when we look at the tab, we're going to say this is the next note we play as we go through the melody from left to right. And then these are going to be our frets up top. So this zero is the nut. And then this is going to be uh, the, the first fret that we would fret, which you could think about on the fretboard, but I'd be playing it right there. Fret one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So if I look over here, then we're going to say, for example, this this first note is going to be on this G string, but it wouldn't, there's nothing fretted. So it would just be the G. And then we're moving to the next note of the melody, which is on the D string, and we're fretting the second one. So here's the second fret, here's the D string, so that would be this E. And then we're moving to the next note, going from left to right, and this one would be on the A string. So it's on the A string right there, and it's going to be the third note. So it's going to be the third note over. And so that's going to be how we'll, we'll map that out. And then I'll also put the, the I tried to map out the, the song up top. So, oh, say, can you see? So that we could map that out as well. And then here I'm putting basically the notes uh, that we're playing. So if we map this out, if we look at up here on the guitar, I could see it here, even if I didn't have my guitar, my fretboard up top. And I could say, okay, that's going to be, you know, the G string, and then do do do, and then at zero, it's just going to be the G, right? But I can see it right here, and then I can also see it here. This is going to be G. I'm going to call it the eleventh note because 
if there's 11 notes in the musical alphabet, there's a G and then the G sharp is, I mean, there's 12 notes in the musical alphabet, G sharp is the last one, so this is the 11th. And then I'm also gonna give us the, the relative position. Hopefully I have this mapped out correctly. I did it fairly quickly, but this is, this is telling us the relative position relative to the key of C. Now I wanna point, this is something out that could be useful if we wanted to convert the song to something to some other key and you'll note that this song one of the issues with with this song for people that are singing the song is of course that it uh, for anyone who's watched an american baseball game right it's gonna it's good it, it hits a high it, it gets high notes because it's gonna go to it's gonna go between multiple registers right so so you may you may try to convert it to a different key and see if that's going to be easier to sing. So, so any any key that's a major key, you might con, you might try to convert it to. Now, how could you do that? There's a couple of ways you could do it. One is you can learn what we're doing here and get the trusty capo, and then just play the same thing as we capo it, and see if that's something that's going to be easier to sing. So then you have the same pattern, but it would be fitting up here. The notes would be different, but the pattern will be the same. So that's that's one way that we can adjust it. The other way that we can adjust it is we can say, let me take the relative positions, uh, meaning it's going from taking the fifth, taking the third, right, taking to the first, and and then transpose those relative positions to another key, and and that's another that's the other way that we can convert it. We're not going to do that a lot uh, today, but I just want to point that out. That's why these learning something in terms of the relative positions can be useful because then you can then you can you know transpose the song from the key of c uh to to other keys so what we'll do is we'll we'll map it out this way and then i also color coded it so this is the the first note is going to be green so it goes the first note is green the second thing we play is going to be the orange and then i know this is hard to see a little bit but that's the dark blue yellow versus purple versus red so in other ways, here, this is the first note we play in green, then uh, the orange, and then the dark blue, the yellow, the purple, and then the red. So if I look at that over here, we're mapping this out first just in open position. So if I look at it in open position, you've got the green, that's the first one, and then the orange. So you've got the oranges right here. I know it could be difficult to see, but there's the orange, and then there's the blue. And then the yellow is inside of the orange, right? So if it's inside, that's, we played the orange before, and now the yellow is inside of it. And then the purple is inside the green. That's the next one we play. And then the, the red. So that might make it a, a little bit, you can play it with the tablature right here. But I think it's, then if you wanna look at the notes, you might look at it this way and try to memorize this order of the colors and then be able to play it within here. Now, once you can play it within here, you could play it, of course, up top as well when the guitar repeats uh, up top, which is difficult to do on, on an acoustic here. But if you had the electric, you're probably going to have a little bit more room. Or if you had a cutout, you can play it uh, up up top. And that's part of what we've been learning uh, in our process. And then the next, the next phrase that we're going to have, by the dawn's early light, Right, and then so we have it mapped out here. Now I have the screen large enough that I can see these two at the same time. So I can see this one. Oh, say can you see? And then you can see it over here and play the next bit, which again is mapped out down here in tablature with the low string on top. So so now we're on the on the higher uh, register down here. You can see, and then hopefully I have that mapped out properly. And then we go through the whole song. Uh, basically this way and so we'll we'll take a look at it going through this way and I won't I might not be able to get through the whole thing but I'll show you the technique that you might apply so that you can that you can continue going uh, through it here so we have that goes all the way out this way now what I was also trying to do I didn't quite get to what I wanted to do with it uh, but I started just to get an idea of how you can kind of play with these. Once you get a simple melody that you know in your ear, then you could transpose it up this way, right? So, so this is going with our project. This would be the next position. So we learned it in open position. 
then you can say, okay, well, I should be able to move it up to the next position, the A-shaped position or position five, and basically look for the same notes. I should be able to play the same thing here. So we mapped it out with our tablature up here so that you can practice playing the same thing up top. Now, we only did this for the first phrase because I ran out of time. But you can once you learn to do that, you can then go over here possibly and do that with the other parts of the song. And that's a, you know, a nice exercise to do. It's a little bit trickier than you would think at first because of the, the different voicings, uh, some of the chords that we're playing being inverted, right? So that's, that's why it can be a little bit tricky. But that's another way you can play with it, right? So then we can also do the same thing. I can move it up to the position, what I would call position one, take the same thing and now try to play it in position one. And then of course I can go to position two, do the same thing in position three. And uh, well, this is another way to play it in position two, we'll talk about, and then position three, and then back to uh, position four. So that's, that's the next thing that we can kind of look at. Now, the other thing that I always found interesting whenever I learned things, like one of the first songs I learned was like a, a green sleeve song and I ended up. And what I did is I got a I got a, a piano that showed me how to play that on a piano and then I tried to transpose it on to the guitar is what I first started. <laughs> and then and then the what I what I was doing at the time is like I didn't really know how to play the chords on the guitar, but I know how to play a power chord. And a power chord is just the first and the fifth. So, so if you've been looking at our present, our lessons, notice that this over here is mapping out all the notes in the key of C. These are all the notes in the key of C. And so these are the notes. There's going to be seven of them. And this, these are indicating whether or not it would be building a major or a minor chord from the notes in the key of C, right? So the one is uppercase numeral, therefore it builds a major. The, this is a lowercase, it builds a, nine, a minor for the two. So the three or the E would build a minor, the four would build a major, the five would build a major, the six a minor, and the seven has the dot, it's gonna be that weird one with uh, the diminished. So, so, but you'll note whether it be major or minor or even diminished, you know, or major or minor, the first and the fifth will be basically the same distance, seven, basically seven notes away. Uh, well, you know, we don't need to get, but the third is what makes it different between a major and a minor. So, so the power chord is taking just the one and the five and you can play, and it looks oftentimes like this, right? If I'm looking at the C right here, if I play that C and this G, then I have a power chord. So one way that you can kind of play with the melodies is I can, I can convert these notes into chords, right? Because, and so, and, and notice you, you can also learn the chords. We'll take a look at the chords of the song soon. And the chord structure sometimes is a little bit different than the melody, right? Because some, you don't want exactly the same thing happening in the chords possibly than the melody sometimes. But one way you can kind of play with the melody is you could take one or any of these notes as you're playing it and make it into a chord. And the easiest way to convert something into a chord oftentimes is to, is to make a power chord from it. So I used to try to map everything out on the top two strings because those are the easiest strings to make a power chord from. And that's kind of fun uh, to do. So I, I looked at that just to, just to play with it a little here. So this tab right here is an attempt to do that. So instead of playing everything in one position, this way, we could say, okay, what if I mapped out the song and I tried to put everything on the lowest two strings so that I can convert them into power chords? Difficult to do with this particular song because the song goes pretty clean into two different registers. So if I start on this C, this is like the lowest C on the guitar, which is also this C right here. So you could start on either one. But if I start here, that's the lowest C. And if I start playing up, up, uh, here I get I get past the 12th the 12th fret here pretty quickly because if this was a guitar it's going to go past up to this C would be in the next octave up which is also right here so that's why you still have to go down to this string if you're going to basically do that starting from the C but I basically mapped it out so you could I could play you know a power chord 
to start here, you know, when I start here, boom, up to here, and then and then here, and you can and then go down to the C, right? And if and as long as you're not in between these two strings, that's where the kink in the tuning is. You can always convert whatever note you're playing, you know, into a power chord. So I, that's kind of fun to do. Although, again, if I map it out this way, we'll still end up moving down here into these lower strings. I don't get quite down to that B, but but you know we'll be down here now the other thing that's kind of fun about that is that if i wanted to convert this then if i learned everything this way and i'm not and i and everything's going from that c i'm never moving up to the top string because that's the lowest that's the lowest note uh in the song i believe then i and and if i'm not going between these two strings i could convert that whole pattern up uh to the g Right, and I can, and I, I won't do that here because then that would be converting to another key. But once you learn, if you learn things on the top two strings, that's one. It's kind of easy to convert it. So if I played like this pattern, and and I know that I can convert it down here because I don't, I'm not running into this kink in the tuning, right? So I could play that same pattern pattern here. Right, and so that's that's kind of fun to do, and then I can convert the whole thing into power chord. That was kind of ugly, but you get the idea. So so that's kind of fun to do sometimes. And then the, the next bit of the worksheet over here is looking at the chords, and the chords are kind of interesting uh, uh, in and of themselves. So this is basically I tried to map out the song here and put the chord changes up top. So when you would actually change the chord changes. Now, in our presentations here, we haven't spent much time thinking about when we when to do the chord changes and the strumming and stuff because we've basically been kind of picking around and looking for the notes on the guitar. Uh, also, uh, these chords notice are you might come up with different chords like if you if you look up the song from different people because they might have slightly different ways that they're mapping out the chords. I kind of liked. Uh, the look of this one uh, and and I'll give you my kind of theory on it again I'm not like a music theory like g guru I'm, a, I'm an accountant that been messing with the guitar for you know like 20 years and, and whatnot but uh, but notice that the melody is like you know is going to be slightly different sometimes than the chords that you're basically going to be playing and sometimes if I look at the chords here I'm going to say hey some of these chords are not within the key because remember we've been mapping out over here the the key the key of C. So you would think the chords that would be in the song, if the song's in the key of C, would be a C major, a D minor, an E minor, an F major, I'm, uh, an F major, a G major, an A minor, and possibly a B diminished, right? But so a lot of times songs will deviate from that a little bit. And so let me just give you these yellow notes are the areas where it looks like it's deviating, right? So we have here, for example, this E. Uh, you, know, you would think it would be an E minor. And so in, it's showing here that it's, a, it's an E major. That doesn't fit within, within here. Why would that be the case? And we talked a little bit about this when we, when we started mapping out different positions and looking at at different modes and I think you know the idea here would be that that E is actually moving into this A minor the A minor is in our our uh, system here right that's the sixth so so remember if I'm trying to lead into something like if I'm trying to make that a destination then I might try to say what's the fifth of that note which is an E here and then and then I'm gonna convert this minor to a major because that's gonna lead in a little bit more. So that's why, so we might get into that in a little bit more detail as well. Same with this this D7, like where, it's like, where is it a D7? It should be a D minor that would be in the key. Well, where's it leading to? It's leading to a G, which is kind of a, de the, the song's pretty neat that it has a, a destination point that isn't always C, right? So now it's leading to that G uh, here and how's it going to do that? Well, well if I look at the G, which is down, which is the fifth, uh, the fifth note of the key of C, its fifth is a D, 
right? And so in order to lead in order to lead into it, I could play a D that would lead in. In other words, you could play a D right there, you'd probably be fine. But or you could even play a D minor and you'd probably be fine because that would fit in the uh, in the chords. But it's trying to give a little bit more pull to it by adding the the seventh, which would be a D major seventh, which kind of leads into the G a little bit more. And so you can see the same thing here, same thing. We have a G7 here, same kind of concept. You could probably play a G, which fits in our chord, but the seven, uh, when you add the seven, it, it usually gives it a little bit more of a pull to go back. And then same way we have down here, a A7, same kind of idea because it's going to a D. So here's the, the D. So again, you could probably play an A minor there and you'd be okay, but but the seven gives it a little bit more pull. So I so so I've put those those ones that are the, all the notes that we have mapped out here. So here's a here's how you play a C. So here's going to be our C, and then this is going to be a G. So this is our normal G. Here's the C right here. Here's our G. That's normal. Here's our A minor. That's the six. That's normal. And then here's where we have one that's a little bit funny. This is going to be our uh, e major instead of E minor. So here's what it would have been, but that third, now we're saying we're not playing the third, uh, but instead, instead we're playing this this note, which is a G sharp. And why? Because that's going to lead. That's going to be a leading note. So it did that. It has a D seven in the things that we're looking at here. Normally you would think it would be a D minor, right? But it's a it's a D uh, seven, so that means it's got a different. It's basically switched it to a major and then added, you know, the seven, and then we have a G seven, which basically is taking. It's just basically a G, but it's adding the seventh uh, here, and then we have well, it's adding a set. It's adding a seventh, and then we have the the uh, A seven, uh, which it, which again you would think it would be an A minor here, but it's converting it to a to a major so so we might take a look at that a little bit and just kind of play with it uh play with the strumming a little bit if we have time for that as well so let's just go back on over to the first one and just look at look at this first pattern so notice that this pattern you can see in our tablature basically looks like a you can see that it basically looks like a c right here it's climbing up the c so instead of like uh trying to finger pick around in here, I could just hold down my C and say, oh, what can I play most easily kind of in this position? And then I can look down here or I can try to find the, the ordering of the notes up top. So I'm gonna say, all right, there's a, this is a G open position. So if I just hold down my C, the open string is right here, right? I'm not playing, so it's right there. And so it goes from there and then it's gonna go to the orange one, which is here, which is gonna be that E. So that one is just above it. So all I'm doing is playing up. It's basically just an arpeggio. So du, 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 and that brings me to this C right here. And then it's going back down the other way. So now I'm at that C and I'm going back down to here, which is on the D string, two frets, which I'm just basically holding back down to the E. And then that's gonna take me back to the open G right there. And then I'm closing it out with this number one, which is the C which again, I'm, I have my finger on right there. So all I have to do is just start at the G and go up. So that's pretty, as nice and easy as an intro as we can get from the melody perspective. And if I was to convert it, just note that if I went up here and say, okay, well, what if, what if I was playing it in this uh, position? If I convert around this C that we've been looking at in the past, I'd basically be playing an A-shaped C, which would be. So now I've got my, my first, this is the fifth, and then here's my, here is my third. So, so that's nice. The problem is that, that it's inverted a little bit because it should be, you would think it would be the one the three and the five, right? So now, so now I've got my third is, is an octave off. So I can't play the exact same pattern just holding down this position, even though I have the same three notes in it because, because the octaves are a little bit different if I wanna play it 
you know, in the same format. So what do I have if I was to play this? We're going to say that we have on the D is uh, the fifth. So, so here's our D uh, is the fifth string right here. And then instead of going, instead of going to the E down here, I'm going to go to the E back here. So I'm going from this G and then up to that C right there. And then I'm just going to play back the other way. So C, I mean, it, here's the C, here's. And then now I'm back up here to this G and I'm going to add the C underneath it now. So we had to move a little bit out of position because of the inversion that's taking place, but you can play a similar thing there. And once you get the pattern down, then, then, it, then you can kind of play with it a little bit as well, right? So then you can do the same thing up here. If I was to move it this way, I have kind of like a G-shaped. This is a G-shaped C because it's boom, 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 and then the bottom bit. So if it was a G, it would look like this, like that. But here we have, this is the top half, the bottom half. So if I look at this top half, now it's kind of in order again, where I have the C, the E, and uh, the G. So if I look down here, I'm starting on the G, which is right here. That's where my ring, my pointer finger is. And then I'm moving up to the A string, the seventh of the A string. And then I'm going to the uh, eighth fret here on the, uh, on the E string and then back down repeating the pattern, right? So this is nice and easy. This fingering is a little bit difficult, but once you have the fingers down, it's just, and then right underneath it, we have that C, which is on the G on the fifth. And so then you could do the same thing up top and say, and say we could go to the next one and say, what if I was on uh, fret seven? So now you have, this is that big uh, bar chord, which is like a, this is an, E-shaped bar chord up here. So I would call this an E-shaped C major. And the C is gonna be on top. Notice the third is uh, behind it here. Now, if I, if I play it normally, I have the third is down here. But again, it's kind of inverted. That's not the octave of the third we want. So I really want this third over here. So what we end up doing is we're starting at the G. So the G is the fifth which is right here. So we're starting out this green one that's here. And then we're going to go back to the third and then up to the, up to the C and then back around again. So I can, I can start at this one. So there's our C right there. And then, and then the, uh, uh, octave on the C is right there. So we have it there. And then, we could play the bottom. Notice that this shape has a bottom part of it too. Uh, whoops, I was in the wrong position. If I was here, if I played it down here, notice you've got your, your C here. Now again, if we start playing it down here and that's my lowest note, we're gonna start going very high in the register if we played the whole song because we're not playing it from the lowest note. But if you see down here, you could, you could see it. And sometimes like if someone, if you're playing with a band or something like that, and they're playing it in this register, then you could play it in, you know, a different register, right? So here's like, and this one, now here's the G, G, it's the same shape that we saw. Uh, well, let's just play it here. We have it down here, we have, we have, do. And then that, that C below it. So, right, I'm just going from here, upstroke, upstroke to here, down, down, and then to this C. And you can see it here mapped out. This is mapping out to the green, and then we're moving to the orange, and then we're moving to the blue, and then we're moving to back down to the yellow, to the purple, and then to the uh, red. And then, and then again, we could, do it one, we could do it again over here in uh, this shape. So that's just something to kind of play play around with once we learn like a basic melody like this we can kind of we can convert it in that way so let's do that so so the way you might want to play it across is the next shape looks like this so once i get that down once i'm 
So then I can look over here and I can practice each bit at a time. We might want to actually sing it as we go, right? Oh, say can you see? And then we can go over here and say the next bit is going to be on starting on uh, this E. We're going to the high register down here. And then we're going to go to this D. Now notice I'm just still holding down my shape. The D, I'm putting my pinky pinky down to pick that D up. And then we're going to go to the C, which I already have down on this finger. So I just pick up the pinky. And then, so now we're on this one. And then we're going to uh, this E uh, up top. So the E is going to be boom and then we're going to this now this is outside of our key notice that we're, we have this uh, F sharp or G flat and so I have to reach up to that one that's going to be here and then I'm going to go into my open G you can also reach up here and slide it up because that's a, and that's nice to look at because it's a leading tone why does it do that it's outside of our key it's adding a little bit of flavor because notice what the song is kind of doing here. It's kind of making the G now, it's in the key of C, but it's making the G a destination. And how does it make the, the key of G a destination? It adds that leading tone. And that's a similar thing that we were talking about over here in the chords. It's kind of giving that, that lead in. So then if we play these kind of together, then we can practice each bit together that we could see over here. We could say, all right, so I'm playing this bit. That's that bit, and then I've got the green, putting my pinky down, and then opening up to the pointer for this C, and then we're going to the E, and then to this funny one that's outside the key, and then I'm gonna go back to the open underneath it, which is this G right there. These two, I have two red ones, you're not gonna play those at the same time, it's just showing that, that this is the one that's kind of in our open position, but I think sometimes you might lead into that, that way. And then we can go, okay, let's look at the next bit. So we can go over here and say And so let's go back just a, a, a hair. So now we have this bit. So now we have a G so that's going to be the open G. So if I'm just holding down my normal position on a C, that's an open. And so two of those, boom, boom. And then we've go down to this blue one. That's going to be here. I'm going to lift up, or I don't even have to lift it up. I can just not put my palm on it, <laughs> get my palm out of the way, the open one. And then we're going to the third one here. Once again, that puts my pinky down on that D. And then we're going to go back to the uh, one and then open. All right, so let's do that a little bit faster here. I don't, I'm not sure. I think I got that right. Let me try it again. So now we're going to be saying we have the open G. So and then the E. I don't have to move any fingers right now. Now I'm going to be putting my finger down on, on that D and then down to the one and then open. So pretty limited movement once you have that C position down. And then I'm gonna go back on over here so I can see the two, the two at the same time. So now I've got the next position. So now we're gonna say, all right, now I've got the open G again. So open G. And then we're gonna go to uh, the B. So the open B. And then we're going to go to the, on the B string, we're going to play the C. And then we're going to play it again. And then we're going to go to that open G again. So I don't need to move my fingers. And this is just playing right up. So notice pretty minimal movement of my fingers on that one. So once again, we've got the open G. And then we've got the open B, so I have to pull my finger up for that. And then I put the finger back down. 
and then we're going back up to the to the open G. My fingers are just down. Whoops, hold on a sec. So we got. And then we're going to say, all right, let's look at the next one. And then so now we're on the open G. So I just have my fingers in my normal C position here. So I've got an open G. We're just repeating again, as you can see. Right, same thing. I don't have to move my fingers basically at all for that. And then once again... We've got, I know I should widen my thing a little bit here. And then this is repeating again. Open, I have to put my pinky down, and then lift it up. And then we're going to the uh, uh, the D string. So the, the D string is where the E is. And then reaching up. And then this is where I could slide up to here or just play the open. So that's the same pattern. And then, uh, let's try to put these two on the same screen at the same time. And then we're gonna say, all right, so now we've got the G, open G, so I just have my fingers down, open, open, open E, and then I'm putting my finger down on the B on the third, whoops, here and then the one, and then open. And let's go to the next one. Try to get through this, and then we'll do the next parts, and then we're gonna go to the uh, G is now, I'm putting my finger down. Now notice I have to move fairly significantly out of position. I'm putting my finger down here, and then I'm now I'm gonna go down to the open B and then back on the B and then I'm back in a normal position and so then we're gonna go okay and so now we're on that getting towards the final bit so open notice we're in this higher octave now on the high string down which I'm putting on the bottom right So open, open, one, three, three, and then now we're on the one, open, three, so playing in this higher octave, and then we've got And let me finish it. And then we've got, once again, this is that, that two. So you have to, you're going fairly substantially out of position here. Not too bad, but right. And then we're going to go open one. And then we're reaching up here. That's going to be our, uh, our uh, E again. So, so if I had my fingers down in my normal position. And then now we're reaching to this leading tone again, which I could go back into that G that made that G of the destination or open G, which would be in the position in our position. So that G has now been kind of the destination from that last bar. So then we've got the open G and then the B. Now notice right here I've got I've got two things in one spot because if I was to sing this it'd be something like uh, try to sing it oh say does and then that right that's kind of it that and, and then we have the G in the second star spangled and then we're gonna go over here. And so now we have the B. Dun. And then again, I have this two kind of together here. 
It goes ban ner so boom and then once again up here and then and so then we have the open G and then one three and then these two are kind of together again and then the three let me fix that yeah and then and then we've got uh, finally gets back to that C okay so I think that's the general idea so I think that the, so if, so I think the to get the whole thing if you if we do like two pieces at a time I think that's the easiest to do it to put the two phrases together and then chunk it together uh, one at one at a time once we have the simple melody down notice that you can take each of these notes and then and turn them into a chord and kind of play with it that way uh, in that format so to just get and and so to get an idea of that i've also mapped it out basically this way in terms of what if i played it up on like one string so if i was to do that it would, it would look something like this first bit this would be a c and a, a, here's the g right so if i start on the 10th it walks back to the root so this is the lowest note so if i that's the lowest note i'm going to say it starts on this g g e c and then, whoops, sorry. Uh, G, E, C, E, uh, G, and then the C right below it. Now, by doing that, I can play, I can, so basically, then I could convert that into power chords, right? So, so I could say this is going to be. So, and that's just taking the two notes. I'm always just playing a pattern all the way down and it, whether it be major or minor I can kind of convert it into a chord and, and have some fun with it that way if I was to convert it into the full chord the C would be a, a major uh, the the well if I start on a G the G is a, is a major the E is usually a minor if it's in the key of C and then the C is of course a major and the C here is a major so if I was to convert that into a full chord this would be starting on this G it would be an A shaped G major, and then I would go to an E, that would be an a, E minor shaped, uh, uh, an A minor shaped E minor, like that, and then down to the C, which is here, which would be an A shaped C, back up to then my E minor, A shaped E minor, back up to my, or A minor shaped, back to my A shaped G major, and then below it I have my C which I could do with a power chord, or I make that into a D-shaped uh, uh, chord here. But the funniest thing, the easiest thing to do is, if you're going to convert it into little chords, is just to make that shape, that power chord, because then you don't have to worry about major or minor. Like, something like that. And then, and then again, you can play that, and you can kind of play with that as you, as you move up. Now this is again a little bit difficult of a song to do that with because it moves up to that higher register which makes it hard to keep it on one string unless you have a longer neck than what would be on an acoustic. If you took that same concept and moved it down to say B flat, which I think is actually a, 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 a register that's easier on vocal chords as well. So if you took that same thing and put it and brought it down to, to a B flat or even to the A or something like that or even down to E, minor you can move that whole shape and play basically the whole thing on the top two strings basically that way and then you can kind of do power chords and mess with it that way which is some I, I think that's kind of fun to do you don't see people doing it all the time but it's a fun kind of exercise uh to do but in my opinion so now let's just like look at the at the chords so so this is just one of the chords i found and noticed it doesn't exactly map on to how you would think well you would think well to make the chords i can just take the melody right and then just convert it and just convert each of the notes to a chord 
that would be in relation to the key that we're in. And you could do that, right? right? But the chords, the actual, the chords of a song sometimes are going to be different than that a little bit, right? Because, because you want the chords possibly to sound a little bit different than the melody, just so they're doing something a little bit different. So as we saw here, you could have different uh, chords based on wh whatever you look up for the sheet here. But as we saw here, we, we could see that, that the switches, you can question some of the switches and say, well, that's not in the key of C. But again, we have that leading tone oftentimes that might be the rationale as to why these are here. So I think this one sounded pretty nice. I'm, like I say, I'm not like an any case. Let's just take let's take a look at it. how would you strum it if you were to try to play it this way. So we, obviously we have the chords up top. We have the chords mapped out so you can look at how to play the chords. And we have the chords mapped out over here so you can look at your fingering for all the chords that are used and then it's a it's a matter of switching the fingers remember that if anything is outside of our key within this structure and you're not comfortable with like the sevens or whatnot you could convert them to something that's in the key and it'll probably sound fine right it's it's just that these these chords i think the idea would be that that they're going to give you a little bit more flavor a little bit more leading so i'm just going to play the first couple bits of it and say how how might i built up my skills doing this I think the first way to do it is to try to think about how you're playing like kind of like Bob Marley played with just his thumb, <laughs> just his thumb, and then and then work up to basically strumming. I do think that it's a time when sometimes I put the pick down and I might use my fingers like they're a pick just so it's a lighter touch so that if I'm singing over the top of it that you can actually hear it singing. The guitar's not quite so loud, it's just giving some background. And then I would maybe start off by just trying to strum the chord so I have a C in it. I mean, I've got a G, I've got a C, I've got a G, I've got an A minor, then I've got the E major, which is outside the key, but that's just putting this finger down, and that leads nicely into the A minor, which I think is why it is there, because it has that leading tone, this note that leads in here. And then and then we've got the D7. Now, the notice that in our key, we have a D that looks like this, right? The D would be this shape, now, if I wanted it to lead into the G, because the fifth of the G, uh, the fifth of the G is a D, then I can convert it to a D, which is, has a little bit more leading tone. The D major looks like this. If I want it to lead in even more, I can convert it to the seventh. So that's like this. So you can see this as a D major already outside of the key, seventh, meaning it's just adding uh, the seventh on it, which looks like that. And that leads into the G. So if I, so you don't, you could just play a D minor into the G, probably be fine. You could play a D major into the G, that'll give you a little bit more flavor. And then if you play the D7, it's going to give you a little bit more lead into the G, I think is the general idea there. So, so then I would try to play maybe down and just, just try to play as though whenever the, whenever the change happens in the song, so I'm just trying to play down. I'm not trying to get a rhythm going on it. I'm just going to say, Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. So that's just the first couple bars of it, right? And so I'd play it kind of like you'd play like, like a a bard at a bar or something in an old time you know movie where 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 you know they're just kind of playing and then talking over the thing of it just giving a little bit of background right so oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight something like that and then you can work in the strumming pattern on top of that right so now i usually try to make my fingers into a pick i get rid of my nails because the nails will sound louder and i'm trying to make it sound kind of quiet so i can hear my voice if i'm over it so
what's so proud at the twilight's last gleams? Whose, whose blood signs and bright stars for the perilous fight? Something like that, right? And obviously, I'm not an expert at at this, so you can practice your strumming patterns, practice your timing, get a metronome on it, uh, and whatnot. But like I say, if that's what I would suggest on that. So maybe we'll play with that more, but we're going long here. So I tried to map out, you know, the switches. So you can, you can take a look at that and play with that. And like I say, any of these notes that aren't in the key that you're not familiar with a seventh and so on, then I, I think you'd probably be okay to just convert it to what is in the key uh, over here, the, the notes that we've been learning in the key and you're probably uh, would be fine. And then you can spruce it up a little bit with those items. And then you could try to, like if you're mixing stuff together, you, you know, you could try to play, the, play, it, play this and then play the melody, you know, and see how well our melody goes together with the chord constructions that we've constructed uh, and so on. Uh, I was thinking about doing that, but I'm not a so I'm not a software savvy uh, on all that stuff. But if you had a looping pedal or something like that, it could be fun to do. But anyways, uh, that's that's what I got today. <laughs>